Nadine Onger, two-time Women's World Cup champion and one-time uh, NWSL champion with uh, the Thorns as a coach. Uh, thank you so much for being on with me and sharing your time. We're living in kind of strange times right now, having to communicate like this virtually. Um, obviously, the team has a uh, moratorium on training, so you guys can't go back to training until at least April 5th. Uh, the preseason has been canceled, so you guys would have started preseason in three days. Uh, so how are you holding up knowing that you can't really go and do your job right now? Yeah, it's of course, it's, it's so annoying because, uh, I mean, the whole off-season, you wait to go back on the pitch, train, train together and, uh, yeah, setting the standards. And, uh, now, yeah, now we are living in, like, a strange time. But, uh, I mean, we can't complain. We have to make the best out of it. And uh, to be honest, I'm doing stuff. Um, I didn't have really time to do it. Or I, I create my own task every day. So. Right now, I'm spending a lot of time uh, watching goalkeepers, finding out new trends, um, finding out uh, new or create new exercises. So I'm doing stuff like this. And in the end of the day, the goalkeepers will, it will help the goalkeepers uh, later on. Yeah. So uh, you mentioned, too, you, you've been speaking with uh, your goalkeeping uh, crew, uh, Britt Eckerstrom, uh, AD French, uh, obviously continuing to talk with them about things uh, you know outside of soccer or in soccer what are you doing to, to kind of keep them switched on and, and to keep them going yeah it's uh, it's so much fun working with uh, bella ad and brett because right now i send them videos they can they could choose like their favorite goalkeeper they think they they uh they can learn from so i send them a lot of video uh, footage so and I gave them kind of a task, like what their chosen goalkeeper is doing good, not as good, and what they can learn from it, cool. from the goalkeeper. Yeah, so, and I, they had like uh, a couple of days to watch the, the footage I sent them, and uh, now I'm, I'm, I call them and we go uh, over the scenes I send them and we discuss about things. And uh, it's so interesting because uh, when you're watching uh, different goalkeeper styles or um, videos while we are discussing things uh, we're both learning and we get uh, we find out different things so um, it's not the perfect time right now but I see it so positive because we as a goalkeeper group we are we are already so close but the whole discussion virtual discussion brings us even closer and I really enjoy uh, I enjoy doing it right now that's amazing. So you're able to kind of sit back and hit the reboot button, uh, focus on goalkeeping technique by watching other goalkeepers. So would you mind sharing, are there any goalkeepers in particular you're, you're watching uh, right now amongst the, the three goalkeepers that you're working with? Yeah, of course I enjoy the term goalkeepers. <laughs> no, but <laughs> uh, no, I mean, they all choose goalkeepers. Like uh, we um, talked right today, we talked about Mark Andre Testegen. I talked with Bella uh, about him. I talked with Britt uh, about Bernd Leno. And I'm going to talk to AD later uh, today um, about David De Gea. Mm -hmm. So um, it, it's just fun um, to talk with them about not only goalkeeper technique, because uh, we already have our philosophy, but what we are talking about right now is about... Um, game management, decision-making, and it, it's just interesting to hear their thoughts, and then, then I add my thoughts, and we set standards for our fun season. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. I love it. Uh, it's, it's, it's so cool to be able to, to have different goalkeepers to watch, and obviously not being a, a goalkeeper, uh, but being on the broadcast now, it's been fun to get inside the heads of goalkeepers, even though it's a little crazy sometimes, um, in terms of you know, the way they look at the game, because I can ask uh, three different goalkeepers about a play. And I can get three different answers in terms of oh, technique it, they would prefer and, and how they would handle wh where their the footwork. Uh, and it's based on you know the size of the goalkeeper, right? It's based on um, the the philosophy, the style, right? Is there a certain yeah. is there a certain style that you have that you want for your goalkeepers, uh, or is it just really customized based on the three that you have? Of course, I have my my philosophy, and uh, 
Um, but still, within our goalkeeper group, there are differences. AD and Bella, they're a little bit different than, than Brit. So I create um, training sessions and sometimes they don't even realize it. But sometimes it's more for Brit uh, because I want to work specific on weaknesses Brit has. And then another day I work more on uh, weaknesses uh, AD and Bella have. So, but they don't realize it. But so it's, it's, it's a, we have a technique, but within our goalkeeper technique in Portland, we still, uh, it's customized that the training for oh, each, well. uh, each goalkeeper. How are you able to, um, you know, uh, stay involved with, you know, the, the, the rest of the staff and, and how are you guys, I guess, keeping the rest of the team, you know, involved, how, how are you keeping the rest of the team fit? And yeah. kind of ticking forward so that, you know, when you get them back, you know, nobody's been just, you know, watching TV and on the couch all day. <laughs> yes, I think it's, that's very important to keep that, uh, the, that the players and uh, the, the people entertained. And with entertained, I mean, like, give them the daily tasks to keep them involved and uh, keep them still together. I, I mean, we are all spread out right now, but in the end of the day, we are still a team. So. I think Mark especially uh, is doing a really good job and um, still keep everybody busy and, and thinking about their job and uh, thinking about what they can do. Can, and it's not only on the, on the, on the uh, physical side, it's also on the mental side and also in uh, building a, a team culture. So I think uh, Mark did a really, really good great a job together with the rest of the staff to keep everyone involved and busy and still um, uh, keep everyone like um, uh, spread the feeling that we are still a team even if we are not together right now. Is there anything specific that you can share that you guys are doing to to still be together to still enjoy each other's time uh, or is it just kind of customized based on you know goalkeepers defenders you know midfielders forwards that kind of thing? Oh, I think the the forwards don't want me to talk to them. <laughs> so I think it's I, I take of course like what I just uh, explained um, that I send my goalkeepers goalkeeper videos. So, uh, so the team is doing the same with with uh, um, players and their positioning. So Mark um, takes care of a, a bunch of group with different players, Rich, so so. So everyone is involved in, in the whole process and uh, so everyone can learn from, from each other. Wonderful. Yeah. Now, how about you personally? Outside of soccer, what are you doing to, you know, uh, obviously you're not at the pitch anymore and you're not able to see the team anymore, which is where you, you, you know, you're used to being. Uh, so what are you doing to, to kind of stay, you know, stay focused, but also stay, stay loose and, and enjoy your time? Yes. Um, actually, right now, and I really, really enjoy it. I just spend time with soccer, but theoretically. And um, no, it, it's really fun. So I don't see it uh, as negative. Um, I, I'm very positive. I'm, I, I work out every day. Yeah. Otherwise, I would freak out. But um, besides this, I'm just spending time with theoretically uh, soccer education. Yeah. Goalkeeper, theoretically soccer. Uh, you know what I mean. <laughs> sure. Well, and, and what kind of like workouts wise are you, do you have a gym in your apartment that you can use or is it like, you know, too dangerous to go down there? Do you have your own thing you do in your, your apartment or how do you, how do you stay fit? Uh, I go for runs from Portland. So I get to know all the neighborhoods <laughs> yeah. pretty yeah. empty right now. Yeah. So, uh, no, it's, it's just another way to discover Portland. Uh, I, I, uh, yeah, I keep myself fit. By running and exploring Portland, it's it's perfect. Yeah, it's, and the weather's been absolutely beautiful the last weekend or so, hasn't it? It's just been Unbelievable. Uh, I'm I'm kind of curious, uh, you know, in terms of like, um, you know, cooking, uh, reading, you know, watching TV. Is there anything that you're doing, you know, um, you know, if you just set aside the game of soccer, or is it more just like you're you're focused, you know, on on those clips, you know, for the the team, for the goalkeepers? Are you doing like how are you feeding yourself? Are you just is it canned soup or, you know, what are we doing for, for, for <laughs> oh, uh, Nadine? No, no, no. I, uh, indeed, I really appreciate good food, good healthy yeah. food. So uh, I'm not a good cook. Not, yeah. uh, it's not a secret, but I enjoy cooking. Right. So, um, yeah, I go to the store, buy some stuff and uh, try to, to cook new recipes. And 
sometimes it goes well and sometimes it's interesting <laughs> but uh, but it doesn't matter i'm not good but i still enjoy it i really do enjoy it and th this is also a positive thing right now um yeah i, I yeah i start cooking well, we'll get back to food uh, later. We'll have some questions for you at the end of this. Uh, okay. How about uh, like the, the TV shows, the movies, the, the, the reading? Uh, is there anything in there that you're doing to kind of keep active, you know, now that you're not able to interact with people? What we got? I got a, a, a book. Actually, I'm not a big reader. Uh, so, but I, I, that's my next challenge to read this book. Nice. And uh, yeah that that's uh my next my personal challenge to sit down be calm and uh take time to uh, yeah take some time to read so uh movies i, I don't want to watch too much uh tv actually Good. so i watch in the evening i watch one uh, a movie from time to time but i don't want to just sit uh sit in front of the tv and do nothing yeah i hear you yeah. You're active right keep moving around yeah i'm so i'm curious in germany uh do you have family back there and and is everybody doing okay yeah, yeah everybody is doing good then mm -hmm. yeah everyone is safe healthy so that yeah, wonderful all good wonderful yeah. are you ready for my four four two oh my goodness i can't <laughs> wait <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I put together a, a list of questions for you, Nadine. Uh, and uh, what we're doing here is we're going to go with, uh, it's like a soccer formation, okay? You okay. Back four, okay? Mm -hmm. These are quick, fairly easy questions. Okay. Your next four is your midfield. All right, it may be a little bit tougher, a little bit more thought-provoking. Okay. And then your strikers who are your goal scorers, creativity, they'll probably be the toughest two questions. Okay. Oh my oh, God. Okay. And then, and then we have one bonus question for you, the goalkeeper. Oh, okay. Thanks. <laughs> okay. Can't wait. <laughs> All right. So you're ready. So I'm ready. All right. All right. Sounds good. What is your favorite food? It's already the hardest question. <laughs> uh, I'm a big fan of beetroot. So everything what involves beetroot. Did you say beach food? Yeah. Beach. Like, be, like beets, like the vegetable, or beach, like uh, of the coast. Oh. <laughs> beets, like the vegetable. Ah, uh, okay, okay, I got you. <laughs> I like, Man, what's beach food? Never heard of it. Okay, beets. Yeah. Awesome, yeah. awesome. Some people really like beets. Some people hate beets. It's so. exactly same with cilantro. Same with what? Cilantro. Cilantro, same. Yeah, I love cilantro. By the way. Me too. Yeah. Um. All right. Board game. What is your favorite board game? Oh, what's the English word? Uh, the settler from Catan? Yeah, settler from Catan, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. love it, yeah. love it. Oh, man, yeah. uh, Steve, Steve Clark's favorite, too. Um, oh, great. Nice to play that as well, yeah, cool. of course. Um, favorite movie of all time? Oh, uh, oh. Okay, can we do it later? <laughs> yeah, we'll go back to that. <laughs> all right, favorite oh. book? Oh. let's say the big five for life the big five for life yes i've never heard of that one before hmm, see next next book we can discuss about it yes all right we're gonna do talent is overrated and big five for life all right yeah. we'll come back to your mo your uh, movie one okay okay so you have a back three right now you don't have the back oh. four you're missing yeah, a it's, a, it's just another system <laughs> that's right that's right <laughs> put put him or her in the midfield all right um next four you ready okay i'm ready all right if you were not a pro if you had not played professional soccer what would you have done instead i would have loved to be a pilot a pilot pilot why the thing is it's it's a little bit controversial because i'm so scared of flying I hate flying, okay. but I would love to be a pilot. Sitting in the back drives me nuts, right. not knowing what's going on in, in a cockpit. But if I would be the leader, on, I would love to be a pilot. Okay. I don't know. Yep. I love it. So like maybe the more, more control over... Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> All right. Second question in the midfield. What is the best way to start the day? 
coffee. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Pardon? What kind of coffee? You have like a, you know, like black, 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 black like my uh, German humor, humor. <laughs> oh, just gets you going. Okay. What is the most? I mean, you you've obviously been a, a professional. You played professionally, I think, for twenty years, right? Uh, yes. And you've now been a coach since what two thousand and sixteen? Is that right? Sixteen, yeah, yeah. So, a coach for four years. You've been around the world. You lived in, you know, obviously you were born in Germany. You lived there live in the US. What is the most interesting place you have visited? Who um you mean soccer wise or private? Any either one. What whatever was most interesting. Because I know as a pro, when you visit a place like I've been to South Africa before, but don't oh I just wanted to say South Africa. Oh. I I was in a little oh. little town in South Africa. Okay. In the middle of nowhere. And uh, it was like six hours off road away from the next biggest main street. Okay. And uh, actually I fall from a horse there. Um yeah. okay. it was yeah, long story. And um <laughs> that was the most amazing place I've ever been. It's what like it's it's town? It's in South Africa and it's called Coffee Bay. Coffee Bay? Okay. Yeah. And, but not even directly. Coffee, Coffee Bay is already, already a very, 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 very little village. Yeah. And, um, and Bulungula, that's the, <laughs> the name of the village, is even further away. Gotcha. Bulungula near Coffee Bay. In South Africa. In South Africa. And it's because you got thrown off the horse or what was like the... What was, what made it for you? Uh, no, it was just uh, we lived in a little hut directly on the beach, no door. Uh, we had a door, but you couldn't lock the door. We had like um, the wonderful ocean in front of the uh, the hut and uh, cows. There were everywhere cows around us, and the people. There were a little communica- uh, community. Yep. Um, they produced everything by themselves, so they were very autark. Yep. So, and we spend a lot of time together with the community in South Africa there. So we were more or less involved. So everything they planted, we had for dinner. So it was, uh, was amazing. And you were yeah. there, was it private or was this a... Uh, private. Uh, yeah, it was. A, private. Yeah, very cool. I and I found it randomly. It was, it was not planned to, to go there. And uh, we said, oh, let's go there for two days. We stayed like nine days. <laughs> yeah. The best. <laughs> yeah. Yes, exactly. I know, I know Mike Golub, the president of the, of the Portland Timbers, he, he likes to go to, to Africa and, and do these, um, these trips. I don't know if I'd call them safaris per se, but they're, you know, he, he gets to go to these small little towns and, and travel with these groups of people and see all the wildlife. And it sounds like it's amazing. So it, oh, we, I, we have been so often in, uh, in Africa. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Changing our earpieces here. Yeah. <laughs> switch it, just switch it. Uh, yes, I, we have been very often in South uh, in Africa in general, and we we love it. It's um, yeah. I think with Africa, it's you either hate it or you love it, and sure. I just love it. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. All right, yeah. so we have got through three of the midfield. Last one in the midfield. Who inspires you to be better? Who, who, who? Mm, who inspires me? Everyone I can learn from. So there are so many people. Um, they have different views on things, and they all inspire me. And they inspire me to get better and um, be more open awesome. and learn from these people. Yeah. It's it, it's not only soccer related. It's also in life. So. Yep, yep. I love that. Great mentality. Now, can we get back to the the favorite movie, or are we still thinking about that? Oh, I'm still thinking about. All that. right, we'll get we'll get to that last, or we can just skip it all together if you want. It's all good. Um, uh, all right, we're we're up we're up to the 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 front two. Um, you ready for yeah. it? I'm so ready. 
<laughs> if you could turn any activity into an Olympic sport, what would that activity be? Is the hard one. Playing settler, settler of Qatar. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, yes. If we, we could turn settlers into Qatar into an Olympic sport, that's what we'd do. Yes. Oh, I would be so motivated to win yeah. a gold medal. And you, you think yeah. you'd win? Would you be pretty good? Oh, I, oh, we have a group in Germany, friends back in Germany. We play for 10 hours. <laughs> so, yeah, and it's uh, we are very close friends, and uh, I don't know how often we had fights in yeah. in this game, serious fights because none of us can lose. I'm sure it's, we take it very serious. That's a fun game. Yeah. Uh, I'm with that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, and kind of the second question is kind of along the same lines. Uh, what is a skill that you would most want to master? I would love to be a much better ice figure skater. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, you are the polar bear, aren't you? Exactly. A polar bear <laughs> who would be able to, yeah, be good in ice figure skating. Why, why ice figure skating? Because I love it. I, you know, I did it for a while and I'm so bad in it as well. I'm really not good. Yeah. Um, but I, I just enjoyed it because with, it's the best uh, meditation. Right. If you're not focused, if you think on something different, you fall and it hurts to fall on ice. I made yeah. this experience a couple of times yeah. and it's just about these little steps. So um, you learn a new skill and you train it, you train it, you train it and then suddenly it works. And uh, like the periods or special movements and I just enjoyed it and I really, really miss uh, ice figure skating. That's awesome. I did not know that about you. Very cool. Well, mm, next, time, yeah. next time it gets really cold in Portland and maybe we get some ice out there, you know, we'll have to strap the skates yeah. on and just go for it, right? Okay, nice work, Nadine. One more question for you. Bonus yes. question. If we can't get the movie, that's all good. Uh, the bonus question will make up for that. And I think I know the answer to this already, but I'm going to ask it anyways. Okay. If you had a spirit animal, what would uh -huh. it be? <laughs> uh. A polar bear? <laughs> yes, <laughs> the polar bear. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> now, for all the Thorns fans out there, uh, do they all know the story of the polar bear? It's been told a few times, I know. Yes. Do you want me to tell the polar bear story? If you, if you feel if you feel inclined, it would it would be you know great for the fans to hear. Yeah. I, first of all, uh, in the Thorns locker room, it's called the ice bear. And it has a little background story. Okay. I didn't know that the ice bear, because polar bear in German means ice bear. Right. So I, I thought it's a one one on one translation. So I said in my speech right before we went out to the game, I was like, okay, and today we are the ice bears. And everyone was staring at me and they were like, what the hell is she talking about? Why we are icebergs today? Yeah. And then I was like, no, 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 ice bears. And they were like, what are ice bears? So, and, uh, and then they corrected me like, hey, ice bears are polar bears. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> and I promised them next week I'm going to use the word polar bears. And then, no, 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 no. We want to be the ice bears now. Yep, yep. So that's why, why we are the Portland ice bears. <laughs> and you, you, you had some really real good success that season too, didn't you? That was, that was the year you won the championship. Is that correct? Yes, and um, yeah, yeah, right before the final, the, the last uh, speech before we played the final, I was dressed like a, a polar bear, and I went like this in the locker room, and I did my speech in a in an ice bear costume. And uh, that's incredible. And I mean, for those who you know haven't played professionally, to have someone like yourself who's so decorated, but it has a good sense of humor and can can take you know the edge off of a you know situations like that. That means the world to players, you know, like you're kind of amped up for a game and all of a sudden, you know, you, you get a good speech or you get a good laugh and you're like, oh man, it's just a game, right? It's just a game and um, it, it helps yeah. so much. It's awesome. So that's yeah. all. It's one of my favorites. <laughs> um, <the ice. laughs> okay. Um, I think that's almost it. One, one more thing, Nadine. Um, obviously during these times, it's 
lot of people are dealing with this differently. Uh, do you have anything you, you want to say to uh, your, your Portland Thorns fans out there or, or your, your fans around the world? Mm, I, yes, of course. I think right now uh, it's, it, it's a challenge for um, all of us. And I think uh, right now it's just so important to stick together and, um, yeah, um, um, be even more nice to each other than normal. And um, it's, I think it's so important to, to support each other and um, stick together. And um, truly, deep off the bottom of my heart, I can't wait to be back in the stadium and um, that everyone is healthy back in the stadium and we celebrate uh, victories together again. Um, we can't wait to see you back in, in Providence Park and the team. And uh, we're so excited to see the squad this year. And thank you, Nadine, so much for your time. It's always a pleasure talking to you. And uh, good luck with the rest of the day. Oh, thank you. Same to you. Thank you.